What's up you guys? Today we're talking about something super, super important, piston rings. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about it. How to identify them, how to measure the piston ring end gap, and how to install the piston rings onto the piston. Super, super important stuff, so pay attention. Remember, our goal here at Rolling Wrench is to make your life easier, whether it be through our videos or our products. So make sure you do a freaking spinning backflip onto the subscribe button and hit the little blue bell that's right on the side so you can get notified when new videos come out. Let's get going on this. Welcome to the chicken scratch extravaganza. I hope you can read my writing here. The cool thing is, is this ring placement and how to measure ring gaps, they all carry over. It doesn't matter what kind of engine you have, they're all gonna be the same general rule here. So this could get confusing, but it's really not confusing. We've got five rings, they all do their own little thing. In a nutshell, this is your expander ring, then you've got your oil ring, and you've got your bottom oil ring. Okay, so those three are gonna go in the bottom gap here of the piston. You notice there's two more gaps. So we've got our top compression ring, top comp ring, that's what we call it. The top ring has a round to it. The rounded part to the top is gonna go to the top. I have an illustration. Top ring is rounded, see that rounded piece? The second ring is gonna be a squared off. So you want the rounded part at the very top, right up there, okay? And then your compression ring, it's square, it's totally square, and that's gonna go down to the second. So that's to give you an idea how the rings go on, but there's something really important we have to do before we can install those rings. See these gaps? Each ring, they're gonna have a little gap there. And once we put these rings into the cylinder without the piston, we're gonna measure that little gap. If that gap is too far, we're gonna be smoking while the engine's running, things like that. Uh, the engine's gonna have low compression on the compression rings. It's very important that this gap is correct. And if it's too large, they're gonna be overlapping each other and the engine's gonna seize. So this step is super, super important. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what our ring gaps are gonna be, our compression rings. That's this ring and this ring, there's two of them. So I need to fi figure out what our bore size is. You, we're trying to measure the size of this piston. I'm gonna do it at the bottom where it's flat. Be careful not to scratch it or anything like that. So we're at 1.6 inches, just about. So I'm gonna take 1.6, inches, just put 1.6 there, it's 1.6 and times it by 0 .004 and that's going to give us our end gap in inches. 0 0.006, we're not going to use that last number. So get on our, ga our feeler gauge here, 0 .006. This is the size that we're going to need to measure the ring end gap, this gap right here in our compression rings. Okay, that's gonna tell us if we're good to go. It can't be any tighter than that. If it is, sometimes you'll take a file and grind these down so you can get to that very, very carefully. If it's too large, then we're gonna have problems too. So the 0 0.006 inches is gonna be for our compression rings only. So to install them, give a little squeeze, get them down there, and then use your little ring gaps there, the little grooves that are cut in the piston, to get a perfectly straight, you want to just make sure it's perfectly straight so your piston ring isn't angled in any way. Now we want to take our 0 .006 and measure the ring end gap. So I want to put my feeler gauge in there and I want to make sure that the feeler gauge fits right through that little gap. And if it's too short, if it's too, too small and it won't fit through there, you're gonna to need to make it fit with a file. So you're gonna to want to measure the piston end ring gap on your second, your bottom compression ring, and your top compression ring. That's gonna be the point zero zero six that we figured out for this particular motor. If you don't know, you're gonna to need to do this calculation. That's gonna be the two thicker rings now for the oil rings, you got these two. That's gonna be 0 0.27 millimeters or 0 0.010 inches. So I've broken down both of them. 
And these are the only two that you're going to need to measure. The expander ring, it doesn't actually get measured. So these two have their own spec oil rings, and then the compression rings have their own spec here. So in this scenario, our oil rings had a spec of 0 0.10 inches or 0 0.27 millimeters and our, our 1.6 times 0 0.004 equaled 0 0.006 inches. Now that we have all of our ring gaps measured, we know we're good to go. Most of the time that these ring end gaps are going to be perfect because they're checked by the manufacturer, but you always want to check because this will ruin your day. So depending on your engine requirements, are you running a turbocharger, supercharger, are you going to do nitrous? Do you want high compression pistons? There's a little chart I'm going to pop up. You can use this chart to determine exactly what your piston ring end gaps are going to be. Now that I showed you the absolute hardest way to get your piston ring end gap specs, there is an easier way. The only reason why we did it this way is because we have a custom piston. This isn't an OEM piston. This is a big bore piston. To make life really easy, just download a manual. It's really easy. Head over to emanualonline.com. That's who we use. Scroll down to the piston rings. The spec will be right there. No baloney. I actually have a 15% off coupon code and a link I'll put down in the description. Click that, head over there, download your manual. They've got manuals for motorcycles, tractors, cars. They've got everything. That, it's fully loaded. These are the manuals that dealerships use. Now that I showed you how to do the ring end gaps, I'm going to show you how to install these piston rings. Very, very important. So if you notice, I have I in there. That's for intake, just as a reference. So again, you got, you've got five rings, and you see these lines here. This, these are the end gap rings. So for instance, when I install this piston ring onto the piston, this gap is going to be there. This one will go over the top of that. This gap will go th there. Not in that order. I'll show you in just a second. But that's what these lines are. These are the ring gaps and where they need to be. The reason why you, these are very important is because you don't want these gaps to line up. Because remember, all of these rings get stacked on top of each other. If the gaps line up, you're going to have a compression issue or blow-by issue, like smoke coming out your exhaust type thing. So you don't want those gaps lined up. Your manufacturer may be a little bit different, but the bottom line is you don't want these lined up. So always, always, always the bottom piston slot there is going to be for your oil rings. I always start with the oil ring expander. This, thing, this thing's really easy to move around first. So remember we want our IN just the same as here and we're going to slide this on here really easy. IN there, same as that. I want our gap there. So see how I'm like kind of corkscrewing this on? Just like this. Right there, we know that our gap, we want to make sure that it's lined up right in the front there. And you don't want it to overlap just like what's happening there. See that's overlapping and sticking out? Very, very important. So let me get this set up. Okay, ring gap is set. Okay, now that we have the expander ring right in the center, we don't want it overlapping, like I said, we're going to go to the bottom oil ring. Remember, we want the gap there. Intake, intake, gap there. So I'm going to kind of line that up. This is going to be our bottom oil ring. You want to make sure that you're not spinning your expander ring around. So I'll line that up and I'm just going to kind of corkscrew this around just like that. You want to make sure that nothing is overlapping, anything like that. So let's check our chart. Expander ring right down the center. Bottom oil ring right where it needs to be. Now let's do the top oil ring. Same thing, but we got to get that position right. So I'm just going to slide that in there and then I'll do the little corkscrew just around like that. There we go. You notice we got one gap there, one gap there, and then the oil gap, oil expander ring gap is in the back. So they're not close to each other by any means. So our second compression ring here, it wants to be right behind the piston pin right here. So I got to make sure that I'm not moving these around with my fingers and because uh, remember the gaps are important, super important. The writing is going to go on the up. I'm going to 
position that where I want it, right there, and we're going to corkscrew it. Now you don't want to open this, you don't want to force this in any way. The piston ring will break. And you kind of want to, you don't want to slide the ring down the side. You'll mess up the piston. So try to get it right over into the second ring gap. There we go. And you can, you can adjust it just a little bit. Before we put this in, we will readjust these, make sure they're good. Now all we have left is the top ring. Now this is super important. Like I told you, on the top of this ring here, it's rounded. It's got, if you notice, it's got like a machine finish right there. If I flip it over, it's a 90 degree. We want it, and it's different on other, different rings have different angles. Some of them are rounded all the way around. This one isn't. So... Here's the illustration. See that rounded part? That needs to face the top of the piston. So I'll corkscrew it in again, making sure you're not moving your other piston rings. And there we go. We've got everything set the way that it asked for. Our piston rings have been, the ring end gaps are good. The piston ring positions are good, the end gaps. And uh, we're ready to install this onto our crankshaft. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you along, well, you're in luck because I've got a complete library of dozens of videos that shows you step-by-step -step how to do certain projects. This is a perfect example of what to expect in our DIY video library. This is a membership site here on YouTube. You can click the link down below if you're interested or Next to the subscribe button on a desktop computer, there's a little join button. You can click that to become a member. That'll give you access to the complete DIY video library along with all the free lives that we put out each week that go into a private area. That's going to be in that DIY video library. If that resonates with you, click the link down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.